This is an all-electric recreation of a model rocket. Can this replicate or even beat the performance of traditional solid fuel rockets? What we thought was a simple project ended up being fraught with failures and teachable moments. Is this idea even possible? First, we needed a propulsion system and selected a 70mm 1.5 kilowatt electric ducted fan, or EDF. This would be driven by an 80 amp ESC and the whole thing would be powered by a 4 cell 1.8 amp hour LiPo battery. For the rocket body, we looked at carbon fiber and other lightweight materials, but in the end we just decided to use a cardboard tube for the prototype. It's strong, light, and cheap. We wanted the motor at the front of the rocket for better air intake and in the hopes that it would help stabilize the flight of the rocket. After many hours of modeling, we fired up the 3D printer and eventually we had some cool looking parts to start assembling. But when we put the nose cone together, we realized that we couldn't get the wires to the battery. Now you gotta get these wires through the nose cone without touching the spinning motor part. So we did some basic testing and then it went back to CAD and 3D printing. New parts are all printed here, so we can go ahead and do a test fit on the actual tube. And those wires will come down through these holes here. With the structural components done, next up was the avionics board, and at its heart was a Raspberry Pi Pico. It also had to fit into the rocket body, so it needed to be long and skinny. Our avionics had to control the launch and flight steps, but we also wanted to monitor altitude, velocity, and attitude in case it got upset. So I added some sensors to monitor this as well. We also wanted to record all of this data for review later, and so added on an SD card. Because this was a prototype, we opted to not make a PCB, instead building a quick and dirty protoboard. Then we had to program the Pico to control the rocket as well as monitor and record the aforementioned data. By adding the RC controller, we could send a launch signal when we were ready for liftoff, but also be able to send an abort signal to the rocket to turn off the engine in case something really bad was happening, like its attitude. When everything was successfully tested on the bench, it was time to try a launch. This first test was going to be a half second burn with the hope that it would just lift off the pad a couple of meters and we could catch it on the way down. This did not go as planned. Armed. The fins completely shredded. They're okay. everywhere. This bit held up is actually not broken somehow. But it flew. Results. Our data showed that the motor took too long to come up to full speed and the rocket basically fell over before taking off. So we made some code modifications, did some repairs, and gave it another try. Test number two. This time, we were ready to catch it after its quick half second burn. As it turned out, a lot can happen in a half second with rockets though. Hey, that's coming down Damn. hard. That nose dive. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, well, is the Oh, the motor looks okay. Now we had a bunch of modifications and repairs to do and had to really think about a parachute system before doing any more testing. The first modification was a whole new front end with a one piece design and shorter distance to the motor. This would make the whole thing stronger and easier to mount. It is too round on the top, it needs to be pointy. After doing some tests with parachutes, we decided that we needed at least a 36 inch diameter chute. Making this was the easy part. Getting it to deploy proved to be a little more challenging. Our first plan was a black powder charge to eject the chute. Using some more 3D printed parts, we tested various charges and configurations, trying to find something that would work. Three, two, one. Well, that was disappointing. There we go. All right, that's better. We managed to blow up everything, but not get the chute to eject. It was messy and unpredictable, so we decided to try a different approach. This is an electric rocket after all, so let's use an electronic release. The design was actually pretty simple. A small servo opened a hatch and let the chute fall out. Finally, we were ready for another launch and increased the runtime to one second to give it enough height to deploy the chute properly. In three, two, one. That was spectacular. Hey, that was pretty fancy. What happened is as this took off, it snagged the bottom of this, which pulled the rocket over. It snapped this off. So there's another 20 hours of 3D printing to go fix this. Not my problem. It's mine. <laughs>
It was not all bad. We had added tilt monitoring to our software, which detected the rocket falling over and the chute had actually deployed. Unfortunately, this didn't do much good, given it never got off the ground. After 20 Take more off. hours of printing, Three, we are ready to try two, again with the new parts one. and modified launch pad. Something was still wrong, and we were not seeing the real problem yet. The rocket just fell over, and it seemed to be due to lack of speed before gaining altitude. So the solution to this was upgrading our launch pad. Having guides would give the rocket time to get up to speed while remaining vertical and maintain course. No. Problem solved, or so we thought. It was time to give it a try, and we pushed the burn time to 5 seconds, expecting everything to just go right. What are the chances that this results in complete failure? In three, two, one. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. Oh, that does not look good. Disappointing is an understatement, and this time we had totally destroyed the rocket. They say you learn from your failures, and boy have we been learning a lot. However, we finally figured out what we did wrong and what caused it to flip. There are two critical factors that determine a rocket's stability, the center of gravity and the center of pressure. The center of gravity is easy to calculate, it's the point where all the mass is balanced. The center of pressure is the same concept, but it's the average location of the pressure acting on it as it moves through the air. To demonstrate this, let's look at an arrow moving through the air. For the arrow to be stable in flight, the center of gravity must be ahead of the center of pressure by at least one tube diameter. With the arrowhead on the arrow, it flies as straight as, well, an arrow. But now if we remove the tip, we significantly move the center of gravity back towards the fletching, but we aren't really moving the center of pressure much. So now the center of pressure is ahead of the center of gravity, which makes the whole arrow very unstable. So what happened with the rocket? By adding the parachute extension to the rocket, it's like adding an arrowhead to the arrow, only to the wrong side. This brought the center of gravity too far back while not changing the center of pressure all that much. As a result, the whole rocket became very unstable and caused it to tumble in the air. Had we remembered to check this, we could have avoided the crash. By simply balancing the rocket, we can find the center of gravity. The center of pressure is more difficult to determine, but a quick and dirty way of doing this is to create a 2D stencil of the rocket and then finding the center of mass of this shape, and doing this in CAD is quick and easy. The new design moves the engine further forward and uses a lightweight plastic for the parachute enclosure. This moves the center of gravity forward quite a bit while keeping the center of pressure further to the rear. With these problems fixed, it was finally time for another launch. This is a big event. And a big event it was, as a bunch of friends had come by to spectate. All that was left at this point was final assembly and loading the rocket into the launch pad. This is it. It's gotta work. <sighs> All right. You count us down. Yep. Three, two, one. Deploy. How was that? Well, it was going well until it wasn't. <laughs> oh. That thing buried in the ground, didn't it? Oh yeah, nose first. So I think the motor's done as well. Let's see. I think that's our final test. So the parachute deployed, it mm. actually opened the servo. Just the parachute. The just parachute didn't open. Didn't open. And uh, the rest of it, well, that's in pieces. This was by far our best launch yet. It was also to be our last, due to irreparable damage not only to the structural components, but to the electronics as well. As for what went wrong, the largest issue was the parachute failing to deploy. The servo did activate, and you can even see the cover fly off in the footage exactly when the abort function was triggered. But it seems the parachute got stuck in the housing and thus never came out and opened. There's plenty of other potential issues here, such as the gyroscopic action affecting the flight path and the thrust to weight ratio impacting stability. And there's definitely a lot of room for improvement overall, especially reducing the weight of the rocket. We have a bunch of ideas. This may not be the end of the electric rocket, but it's the end of this video. So hopefully more to come. Thank you all for joining us on this project. It's been a ton of fun and so great learning more about rocketry.
If there are any real rocket scientists out there with thoughts or ideas, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you all so much for watching, and remember, don't try this at home.